and welcome to Grand Sumo Preview. I'm Morita Hiroshi. The September tournament gets underway this Sunday the 12th at the Kokuikan, the home of sumo in Tokyo. The number of spectators will be limited again as Tokyo is still under the state of emergency due to the spread of the coronavirus. Now, we will be keeping a proper social distancing in our recording as well as my partners, Murray Johnson and John Gunning will be joining us from different locations. Murray, hello. G'day, Hiro. G'day, John. Look, watching the Olympic and Paralympic athletes was so inspiring. Being with you two guys on this show, a close second. Like Murray, I'm very happy to see you two guys' faces again. All right, before we get to the September tournament, let's take a moment and look back on the previous competition, which took place in July. The July tournament was held in Nagoya instead of Tokyo's Kokugikan Arena for the first time in two years. Fans' attention was focused on Yokozuna Grand Champion Hakuho. He was finally back in action after six straight tournament withdrawals due to injuries and coronavirus infections. Yokozuna are supposed to retire if they cannot continue to win. Hakuho's career was on the line in the July tournament. On day one, he was up against Meisei, who had just been promoted to the fourth highest rank of Komusubi. People were worried about Hakuho's right knee as he'd undergone surgery in March, but he scored a come-from-behind win against the up-and-comer. From day two, Hakuho overwhelmed opponents with his skills and sumo sense. He racked up wins using a different technique for each bout until day seven. Another Rikshi extending his own undefeated record was Ozeki Terunofuji, the previous tournament champion. Ozeki are awarded promotion to Yokozuna if they achieve two straight championships or similar results. <laughs> Teruno Fuji was stable from the opening day, fighting in his belt-grabbing style. He marked a personal best of 13 straight wins. This earned him second place or higher, securing promotion to Yokozuna after the tournament. The championship race was now a face-off between Hakuho, who was regaining his sumo instincts, and Teruno Fuji, who was overwhelming opponents. On day 14, Tenono Fuji calmly defeated former Ozeki Takayasu, extending his winning streak to 14. Hakuho saw the win with his own eyes. In his bout against Ozeki Shodai, the Yokozuna employed an unusual tactic in the initial charge. Wow, Hakuho getting well back from the Shikiri Sen. Not sure what this is all about. Coming off the long run. A face slap. Another face slap. Wow, the Harite is ringing from Hakuho. Stand and deliver sumo. Cat and mouse, I wasn't expecting this from him. Now he gets in solid right hand, and this will be Yorikiri, Yori Chaoshi. Hakuho used every trick in the book and managed to keep his record clean. It turned out his bad knee condition was what kept him from fighting in his style. Yokozuna Hakuho versus Teruno Fuji, the Yokozuna to be. It was also the first final bout between undefeated Ikshi in nine years. The two Mongolian born wrestlers stared at each other for over 30 seconds, a rare scene in Grand Sumo. Hakuho's determination to never give up decided the crucial match. Low with a kachihage form shiver. Teruno Fuji gets a grip, but he loses it. 
They go after each other with a slapping attack. Hakuho goes inside, gets the Wate left hand. That's his lethal weapon. Hakuho has the advantage. Terno Fuji wants to get the grip. Hakuho attacks. Once again, Hakuho goes for the Kote and again down goes Terno Fuji. Hakuho with the shout. He wins the championship. 45th overall championship for the top dog, Hakuho. He raised his fist, something he'd rarely done in his previous 44 championships. The Sumo Association prohibits such behavior in the ring, calling it inappropriate for the sport. But for Hakuho, the title had a special meaning. <laughs> What an amazing comeback by Hakuho. You know, he's surprised us many times in the past, but uh, I didn't see this one coming. 15 and all perfect record championship for his 45th title. What do you think, Murray? Well, Hakuho is Hakuho. He does things his way. Now, the final day when Hiro was on was a great day to listen in and watch the show was interesting in itself. Now, the forearm shiver, I believe, set it up. And then those slaps that he introduced, once again, I didn't think that was Yokozuna Sumo. And at the time, I was a bit disappointed with his performance. But when I watched it back afterwards and settled down my emotions, and I watched it numerous times, it was actually outstanding sumo by Hakuho. We didn't think he'd finish the tournament. And to go 15 and zero and beat Tenno Fuji on the final day, I just loved it. Yes, there were some criticisms that with the way Hakuho fought, but they were all within the rules of sumo, so I have no problem with it. And uh, when Hakuho defeated Takanosho in the precarious match, uh, he allowed Takanosho to get right behind him, but he came back and won. Uh, Hakuho himself said that uh, he, he thought he could, could go all the way without a single loss. And uh, going 15 and all proved that he is still the king of the ring. And when he's in good shape, there's nobody who can take him down. What do you think, John? Yeah, it was certainly a surprising outcome, but it was an excellent effort and a real testimony to his brilliance and longevity. That Hakuho Ternofuji title race and potential rivalry is building up into something great. But, you know, I, I would also like to see some of the other ricochets step it up a little bit and maybe challenge for a championship. About the, you know, the guts pose and things like that. Of course, dignity is important for Yokozuna, but it's those moments when the mask slips and humanity breaks through that are most memorable for most of us, I think. Terunofuji, on the other hand, failed to win the championship, but he did earn promotion to the top rank of Yokozuna. He is now the 73rd Yokozuna Grand Champion. You know, if you recall Terunofuji fighting in the second lowest Junidan division uh, not too, too long ago, uh, that tells me how far he had to overcome all those adversities. So what an amazing story by Terunofuji. Yeah, although Terno Fuji may have missed out on the fairy tale ending in July, he accomplished the greater goal, the ultimate aim of promotion to Yokozuna. Achieving a 14-1 record while under such pressure, it's no small feat, and I think if anyone deserves the rewards that are coming the way from Yokozuna promotion, it's uh, the Isagahama Stableman. But he's overcome the injuries and, of course, the illnesses through this long period to go all the way down to Johnny Dunn, as you mentioned. The concern now, of course, is the injury. Can he sustain that? I'd like to see him compete for another couple of years if he can manage the knees, because I think he deserves at least a couple of years as Yokozuna. I'm really looking forward to that. Now, after Tenno Fuji officially became Yokozuna, about 30 wrestlers got together at Isegahama Stable to make something special for the new Yokozuna. Our colleague Raja Pradhan has the story. Yokozuna Terunofuji appeared at Meiji Jingu Shrine in August for his ring entering ceremony, wearing this white robe prepared by his stablemates. Terunofuji will be performing this ritual on his own every day during a tournament, just before the top division matches kick off. The Yokozuna Dohyo ID has a long history. It started all the way back in 1789. 
two extremely strong yokozuna at the time are said to have performed the ceremony to boost sumo's popularity. Every yokozuna wears a ceremonial apron that's part of a three-piece set made specially for him and his two attendants. His belt is this pure white rope. Just like the hemp ropes attached to the gates of Shinto shrines, the white rope around a yokozuna symbolizes deities. There's nobody more knowledgeable about the yokozuna do hyoidi than a man who used to perform the ritual himself. Let's talk to this stable master. Hello, I'm 71st Yokozuna Kakuyu. Nice to meet you. Grand Sumo. When Kakuryu was promoted to the highest rank of sumo, his stablemates and other rikishi braided his rope. The tradition takes a full day's work, even for the strong men. Yokozuna performed the ring entering ceremony thanks to the unseen power of many people. The Yokozuna wears a loincloth, ceremonial apron, and rope belt. The whole thing weighs about 16 kilograms. Before his dohyoiri debut, a new Yokozuna wears his rope belt and learns the movements for the ceremony from a retired Yokozuna. When I wore it all for the first time, it actually hurt my back. It was tough until I got used to it. Kakuryu performed his ring entering ceremony 372 times in his seven years holding the top position. The Yokozuna ring entering ceremony is one of the highlights of any tournament. People have told me they miss the ceremony when Yokozuna are absent. The ritual is packed with traditional elements of Grand Sumo. Yokozuna Kakuryu. The Yokozuna first purifies himself by rubbing his palms together and clapping in a move called Chirichozu. Following the Gyoji's call for silence, the Yokozuna claps again to express his respect for the sacred ring. Next, it's shiko stamping, done to drive away evil spirits. In normal times, spectators would be shouting this together. The climax comes during the seri agari, where the yokozuna slowly raises his body. Kakuryu keeps his right arm extended and the left placed at his side. This style is called ungyu. The extended right arm signifies attacking, and the left defense. The other type of seriyagari is called shiranui. Here, both arms are extended, meaning it's an all-offensive style. Yokozuna Hakuho performs this dohyoiri in this shiranui style. Yokozuna should perform in whichever way they find beautiful. I was always thinking about how to make my performance look better, such as when to raise my face, where to look, or when to turn my hands over. Spectators in the arena Make sure they don't miss out on the all-important Yokozuna Dohyoiri. The two-minute ritual that also reflects each Yokozuna's personality is no doubt a highlight during Grand Sumo tournaments. Performing the ceremony is like fighting a match. It requires the same level of concentration, and in fact we sweat as if we've just fought about. The day's competition begins with the ring entering ceremony. Yes, having a Yokozuna from each side of east and west performing a Dokyo Iri is the way to go. That is perfect. And all the spectators focus in on the Yokozuna Dokyo Iri. That's how serious it is. You know, it, there's nothing like Yokozuna Dokyo Iri. So when you take out Yokozuna Dokyo Iri from the tournament, uh, it just doesn't feel right.
Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think the only thing I could compare it would be perhaps the All Blacks doing their haka prior to a rugby match. But the Don Hill Yeti is so intense, you see the Yokozuna sweating profusely because they're putting so much into it. It's a, it's a bit unlike the other Dohyuri for the rank and filers, which seems a little bit more relaxed. But Teruro Fuji, we saw him at Meiji Shrine do his uh, unveiling of his Dohyuri, and he looks like he's been a Yokozuna forever, but I'm looking forward to seeing him do it on a daily basis. We should mention that in addition to the differences during the ring entering ceremony, the Unyu style rope has a single loop at the back, while the Shuranui has a two. And Personally, since there are two acts of Yokozuna, I would like to see both styles performed. But, you know, Terunofuji is part of Isagahama stable and the tradition there is to do the Shunawi style. So that's what we're going to see. You know, Yokozuna Dohyo, it is a very important ceremony because it makes people realize that the sumo is not just a sport, but a Shinto ritual. And I think the sumo fans around the world appreciate these types of uh, ceremonies because uh, these types of uh, rituals are what makes sumo so unique and special. Now a September tournament preview. First, let's check the high rankers. Hakuho and his stable mates will not take part as multiple Rikshi tested positive in his stable just before the tournament. Teruno Fuji will be the sole Yokozuna in action. Two Ozeki, Shodai, and Takakeisho are listed as Asanoyama was demoted while under suspension. Well, Hako is listed at the East Yokozuna, the number one Yokozuna, but he's out of the tournament. Uh, very disappointing, but uh, what do you think? Yeah, it's a shame for sure. And of course, we're robbed of the chance to see the great battle between himself and Terno Fuji once again. But I think having a new Yokozuna in the tournament performing his ring entering ceremony for the first time, that's going to offset some of that disappointment. And of course, the other angle to that is that Hakuho not being there opens up the championship race and allows perhaps some of the more surprised dark horses to come through and perhaps claim a title. I'm looking forward to Terno Fuji's Yokozuna debut, but uh, the history says Yokozuna struggles in the first tournament as a Yokozuna because look at Hakuho, he only went 11 and 4. As we saw Kakuryu doing the, you know, Dokyo Yuri, but Kakuryu and Haruma Fuji, they only went 9 wins and 6 losses in their Yokozuna debut basho. It's going to be hard for Terno Fuji, I think. Yeah, I think Terno Fuji has the ability to win. Now, you mentioned those pressures going in as a Shin Yokozuna. We have COVID and we have no big ceremonial involvement. He doesn't have to meet with people, party, 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 because he's become a Yokozuna. So he's fresh. And of course, we, he's shown before that he can still get more than 13 wins. The other thing to remember, only Yokozuna is showing that they can get 13 more or, or more wins in a tournament. So there won't be too many rivals, in my opinion, for the championship. <laughs> If we talk, are talking about the championship race, we have to include Ozeki combatants, Ozeki champions. Now, I am very concerned with Takakesho. Of course, I would like to see Takakesho in the mix, but uh, look what happened to him. He injured his neck during the last tournament, and uh, that part of his body injuring, and uh, it could really affect the style of sumo he's able to do in the future because he leads in with his head and the neck uh, doing the Buchikamashi, that blast uh, type of tachi eye. So uh, I'm very uh, worried about Takakesho's condition. Well, I'm worried about Shodai because he injured his arm in the joint training session. I don't know if joint training is the right word considering where he got hurt. And he was beaten by Takayasu numerous times before that injury. So he doesn't look good either. Now, I also know that the fans want to see the San Yakumen, the Sekiwake and Komusubi to step up and uh, challenge and get, get themselves involved in the championship race. Well, among them, I'm going to pick Takayasu to compete at a very high level this time. In July, he was mired with a you know, sore back, the back injury, but uh, he seemed okay when he entered the tournament and uh, finished the contest. Now, if he's in good shape, if he's healthy, I'm picking Takayasu to maybe win the championship and uh, for the first time, picking up the Empress Cup. What do you guys think? 
Yeah, for me, if I have to pick someone, I'm gonna channel my inner, inner hero and go with uh, Mitake Yumi. I think it could be set up for him to uh, become the first man in history with the third championship, while not Ozaki, at least. I'd rather talk about Meise uh, going into the role of Sanyaku and Sekiwake. Very impressed the way he's debuted and through the first week in particular, when Wakataka Kage was falling by the wayside at the same time, he kept going and to finish the way he did, I still think he's going to be solid in Sanyaku for some time. So Meise is my man, not to win the tournament, but to keep a, a close watch on. Upper rank Maigashira will meet Yokozuna and Ozeki in the early stage of the tourney. Mongolian born Dixi have made major advancements ahead of the upcoming tournament. Now there's a real up and come out we really need to keep our eye on. And I have a chance to talk to me through a remote interview, so please check it out. Paul Shoryu, at 22 years old, is the youngest Rikshi in the top Makuno Uchi division. In July, he displayed powerful sumo full of fighting spirit and scored two digit wins for the first time since he was promoted to the division. Worthiest of mention is his bout against 200 kilogram Ichinojo. Po Shoryu rolled over the Mongolian giant using only his right arm. What's important is mentality. If you get scared, you cannot fight in your style. I always believe in my sumo, so I don't succumb to negative feelings. Po Shoryu is one of the few leg technicians in the Makuno Uchi division. He was awarded the Technique Prize in the July tournament thanks to his leg skills. He developed his technique from Western-style wrestling he devoted himself to till the age of 16. After joining Grand Sumo at 18, he used his leg skills to reach the top division in just about two years. The technique has been improving and is now a weapon for beating even Ozeki champions. His role model is Asa Shoryu, the first Mongolian-born Yokozuna. Asa Shoryu won 25 tournaments using a variety of techniques. Do they resemble each other in terms of sumo styles as well as their facial expressions? Full of fighting spirit? In fact, Asa Shoryu is Ho Shoryu's uncle. I want to learn everything from him. His great force in the initial charge, quick movements, and huge power. Ho Shoryu is now honing the speed and power of his initial charge. <laughs> Weighing about 130 kilograms, he isn't big for a rikshi. If he allows his opponent to push him back in the initial charge, he becomes helpless. Ho Shoryu checks videos of his sumo repeatedly to find out his weaknesses, whether he wins or loses. He also practices hard every day. His stable has many good sparring partners for him to train with. <laughs> Newly promoted Sekiwake Meisei is one of them. They once competed for a championship in the second highest judo division. We have good training in the stable, since we fight hard like in tournaments. In the upcoming tourney, Ho Shoryu will be the top Maigashira. Wrestlers in the position face all Yokozuna and Ozeki. Will Ho Shoryu be able to score a big upset?
Fighting stronger opponents will make me stronger. I'll attack head on, step forward, raise my opponent's body from below, and do my best. When I checked out Hoshoryu's matches from the July tournament, he took care of uh, Chiu Taidu and Onosho, the strong pusher thruster, by going forward in a hurry. So uh, Hoshoryu is developing some uh, forward charging skills as well, adding ad in addition to his, uh, you know, techniques with his, uh, you know, uchigake and sotogake inside and outside leg tricks. Now, I have a feeling that the Hoshoryu has a great chance to follow in on his uh, uncle's footsteps and uh, make Yokozuna. What do you guys think? Oh, Yokozuna, I think you're a bit premature with that, but I think he's got the ability to upset Yokozuna at the moment. He's certainly shown that he can beat Ozeki. I think he needs to work on a couple of things if he wants to move up the ranks. I think speed is the main thing, and also building his frame slowly. He doesn't have to do it in a hurry. I think building weight and, and muscling up. I don't know what it is about the Mongolians across the board. Maybe it's because there's so many of them, but they seem to have this mental strength uh, Kiribayama, Tamawashi, of course, Tamawashi, the Yusho winners, Ichinojo, the list just goes on and on. And they seem to have a mental strength and a technique ability. And I think in the world of Grand Sumo, they're very resilient. I mean, everything that you guys are saying there is correct, but one thing we should also bear in mind is that the 65 Mongolians who've come to Japan to join professional sumo, that's a higher baseline because you're already talking about people who are willing to move to another country and engage in a physical sport. So you're talking about already the best of the best or the cream of the crop coming over from Mongolia. So it's not surprising that there's a high rate of success among that group. So let's keep our eye on Hoshori and uh, not only Hoshori, but uh, the other uh, high Maegashira combatants. If they uh, compete at a high level, it should be another exciting tournament. And that's all we have time for today on Grand Sumo Preview. Remember, the September tournament kicks off this Sunday the 12th at the Kokuikan, the home of sumo in Tokyo. NHK World Japan will have live coverage over the opening day from 5, 10 p.m. Japan time. And also, don't forget to join us on Grand Sumo Highlights to catch all the excitement. All right, for Murray Johnson and John Gunning, I'm Morita Hiroshi. Arigato for watching and sayonara. Grand Sumo! Yes, sure.